welcome to this video lecture series on machine learning this session is all about unsupervised learning in previous two sessions we have seen about the supervised learning now here i'll be explaining about the unsupervised learning and the different types that are there under unsupervised learning that means unsupervised learning is classified further into how many types all those things we will be seeing here in detail so this learning unsupervised learning is by self instruction no supervisor or teacher component is present here so this sentence what do you mean by no supervisor or no teacher component present basically in supervised learning what is that you have mentioned you have mentioned all the values in the output label so the job of the model was to map the input with the output the output label is also mentioned in the data set here in unsupervised learning you are giving the data set without any labels the model has to learn by itself there is no output level component present in the data set this algorithm itself observes the examples and recognizes patterns based on the principles of grouping similar objects are included in the same group since you are giving the data set without any labels then the algorithm itself is going to what observe those examples observe those samples observe those data points and it will recognize that patterns and it is trying to group the objects into the different groups unsupervised algorithms are classified into cluster analysis dimensional reduction and association cluster analysis aims to group objects into disjoint clusters or groups data objects similar in some aspect are included in one particular group so with the, this diagram may help you in understanding the clustering mechanism you are giving the unlabeled data here you can see in this diagram you have the pictures of cats and dogs so this algorithm gets trained with all these features of the images that are fed to the algorithm it is trying to observe all the features of that particular data point and it will group them into clusters it it will put objects of the same kind into one cluster you can see here since we have two different types of objects all images of cats are put in cluster 1 and all images of dogs are put in cluster 2 see the second example here the clustering algorithm is making use of this data here this data is once again what an unlabeled data it has got completely mix of what fruits and the algorithm will study the pattern study the different features of all the data points that are mentioned in this raw data and it will put it into three different groups you can check here this is cluster 1 cluster 2 and cluster 3 in the output you are going to get completely what three different clusters and each cluster is having objects of the same type this is another example here you have what the input raw data consisting of different symbols square triangle and circle so the algorithm gets trained with this unlabeled data when you are giving the new data it will try to put the object with the same features in one cluster so here in this example three clusters are getting generated from this model so how this algorithm is working exactly this clustering algorithm measures the dissimilarities between the data it groups the data into clusters based on the similarities it repeatedly merges and organizes clusters based on their hierarchical relationships this is what i explained just now these points some of the key clustering algorithms are the k means algorithm and hierarchical algorithms next type here under the unsupervised learning is dimensionality reduction or dimension reduction dimensionality reduction algorithms are examples of unsupervised learn algorithms it takes a higher dimension data as input and outputs the data in lower dimensions by taking the advantage of the variance of the data it is a task of reducing the data set with few features without losing the generality this algorithm what exactly it does is it will take a data with higher dimensions higher dimensions here means it is going to take a data with more number of features and it will reduce that data into a lower dimension it will remove all the unwanted features in simpler words you can always define the dimension reduction as like this it is a process of reducing the number of features in a data set while retaining as much as information as possible so if suppose if your data set is having like some 20 features but for the algorithm only 10 features are sufficient then the remaining 10 features can be removed that means the 20 features are getting reduced to 10 features suppose if you are giving a data set wherein you are giving the details about the students name usn sgpa cgpa semester branch father's name mother's name address okay phone number primary contact number secondary contact number hobbies of the students like this there are various uh, features that are there in the data 
your job here is to find out whether the student is eligible for placement or not for that and you want to give finally the details of the students who are eligible for the placement so for that the name usn cgpa value branch name like this few details are sufficient the father's name mother's name phone number landline number address hobbies all these are not required so that means a data set with higher dimension is reduced to a data set with lower dimension here but you are not going to lose the important information while retaining as much information as possible it removes the remaining features so that is about the dimension reduction and which are the different dimension reduction algorithms principal component analysis is the first one singular value decomposition linear discriminant analysis the third type of the unsupervised learning is association mining if you want exactly to know how the attributes in the data set are related or associated because the data set is having more number of features feature 1 or feature 2 feature 3 like this there are several features but you want to see how the features are related or associated with each other so that time this association comes into picture this is called as association mining or also called as association rule learning because you are going to learn the rule for association here to make you understand this concept let me take this example a particular supermarket or shop wants to always keep the stock of the items which are frequently sold how that supermarket or the shop will come to know which items have to be kept in more stock if you want to know this you are going to feed the complete data set of the customers most of the customers when they try to buy milk they also buy bread and butter along with that you can check here customer to milk bread butter milk bread butter basically when you give the data set with all the items the customers are buying the algorithm will learn from this data set and it will try to find an association between the different attributes here the items that are purchased so it is going to have an association yes if an if a customer is buying milk the customer is also buying bread the customer is also buying butter so this is how the association is learnt here this way the supermarket or the shop can always keep sufficient stock of such items key algorithms of association mining are a priori algorithm eclat equivalence class transformation and fp growth so this is about association mining so what is that till now you have seen in this session the different types of unsupervised machine learning algorithms clustering is one the second one is dimension reduction and the third one is association mining now let us see the advantages and disadvantages of unsupervised learning it is used for more complex tasks unsupervised algorithms are preferable for various tasks as getting the unlabeled data set is easier as compared to the labeled data set definitely getting a labeled data set is more expensive than the unlabeled data set since here you are giving unlabeled data set it is having an advantage what about disadvantages disadvantages of unsupervised are less accuracy the output of an unsupervised algorithm is less accurate as the data set is not labeled definitely the algorithm is trying to learn here by itself the, because there are no labels mentioned for the data so there are chances that the output is going to be a less accurate one the algorithms are not trained with the exact output in prior that is for sure you are not going to train the output that means your data set is not having what the label the output label and if your data set is having more features then definitely more will be the complexity so these are the disadvantages most popular algorithms under the unsupervised learning algorithms k means clustering k nearest neighbor hierarchical clustering neural networks deep learning single value decomposition distribution models principal component analysis a priori algorithm now apart from this you should be knowing briefly about semi supervised learning also in semi supervised learning we make use of both supervised and unsupervised learning we actually get the data where the data points have labels and also we get the data where it is unlabeled so the procedure is you need to take the label data and train the model with any supervised algorithm and use the remaining unlabeled data to the trained model to get the labeling done this is the brief information about the semi supervised learning and this is one just diagram wherein you can try to understand the functioning of the semi supervised so you are having a combination of both labeled data set and unlabeled data set but labeled data set will be less compared to unlabeled data set so few labeled data are fed to any supervised learning algorithm you are giving the unlabeled data set in the next stage and uh, 
the algorithm will try to give the labels based on whatever it got trained from the label data set and you can see here the final output from this so this will definitely help because getting label data set is expensive so you can make use of unlabeled data set which you can easily get but make use of the few labeled data set and finally get the desired output and some of the approaches for semi supervised learning are self training label propagation co training graph based methods multi view learning and example applications for semi supervised learning include image classification text classification and spam filtering so this is all about unsupervised learning and a brief explanation about semi supervised learning so in this session completely you have learned how the unsupervised learning algorithm works and how it is classified and which are the key algorithms under each of these three categories and which are the applications under each of these categories finally in the last part of the session you have learned about the brief explanation or working of the semi supervised learning and which are the different approaches for semi supervised learning and also which are the example applications so that's it in this session hope you find it useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care